Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter. Master, op the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN, go into the newsletter, you see the opening call right on the left-hand side. You just hit that subscribe button. You can get one month for $149. Six months for $6.95, which is a savings of 22% or $199, and you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Once you get Basil's newsletter, he has about 10 to 12 archives out there, really gets you to understand how he looks at the market and how you ride that wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. Well, what's going on? It's what's going up. It's the first time in a few weeks that I've uh, spoken to you in this interview and said market is higher. Yes. <laughs> um, a couple of things that we were looking for and what I was discussing all of last week and certainly with subscribers to my opening call is that the intensity of the sell-off in the Dow and the S&P and the Qs, QQQ and the IWM, the main, main index, indices, my on-balance volume, that is, um, it's an old Joe Granville. Joe Granville. Uh, I right. love that guy. I know. Yeah, a very interesting man. Anyway, he developed the system way back, I think it was the 50s and 60s, where you just, it's a, it's a running total of volume. And if the bar that you're looking at closes up, you just merely add it to the running total. And if it closes down, you subtract. Right. It used to be so cumbersome because you'd have a calculator and you have to type in there you know, with 33 million, 400, whatever it is, plus today. Now, of course, you've just got a blue line. And this and it's blue for me, but it's a straight line. And what I was saying is that I, I don't use the MACD or the stochastic for oversold readings. Okay. But I do use the on balance. It's the one indicator, the technical tool that I use. And I said it is really close to a rally. And if uh, three things occur, one is if the volatility index, that's the VIX index, uh, starts to, and I, sh I showed this actually all of last week, for a, a couple of weeks I've been showing, I use a certain, I use trend lines. And if the trend lines can make a little channel, I use that as what I call a chat wave inside track repellent or propellant line. Here at the bottom, you can see this is the weekly chart of the VIX. Yeah. It was a propellant line. And it was so interesting that the high that was made back in January, that was with the Fed, with Russia, Ukraine, with everything happening, oil, the works. The, uh, the volatility index went up to 30, uh, 38.94. That was in January, the week of the 28th. And then it pulled back very sharply to the 20s. And then it spiked back in February. And then it kept making it. And I always talk about these things. I've discussed this so many times. I don't know the mathematical rule. But if you look at this chart, look how this trend line reverse the price of the volatility each time. How does the chart know to make that much of a difference to I the know. downside, to draw an actual perfect trend line to the exact tops or the exact bottoms? I, I, I've got a measurement, and it says it's an emotional measurement, and that is measured by the sentiment so that if it's a rising tide, you'll get higher prices, and if it's a lowering tide, you get lower prices, and the same amount of emotion stops the price that's the only way but that's not a method that's just that's a, an empiric way of looking at it so but isn't it fascinating look what happened last friday uh we were going above the um the trend line thursday and friday and then it stalled the 34.88 that was the week of the 30th of uh, september it closed with a long-legged doji right in the middle of this tiny little mini channel and look what's happened this week. So I said to my subscribers, we've got to be ready for some cause, because if the volatility index pulls back, if the bonds can just uh, have a, a little bit of a rally so that yields can come down, and if the uh, overbought level that I'm looking at, in, the oversold level in the on-balance volume works, we could have a really sharp uh, um, a rally. So we were very fortunate yesterday. We just got, got there in time to, to buy the diamonds yet again uh, because we've tried a few times. I had a real tight 1% loss, but we got it almost at the low of about 29,300, and the low was actually 28,715. So... Uh, we're right here at 30,172. 
But you were talking about this uh, a little while ago. You were saying what happens next is really important because it's going to give us a lot of clues. So I agree with you because in this V-shaped type recovery, and it's fabulous that in so we've taken out eight sessions on the left side in two days. That's really important, number one. Number two is the low so far is September, even though the futures went to lower lows yesterday. So it'll be really important if all of September we're able to not go below 28,715 28, or the low in, in the S&P or the Qs, because that'll suggest that September, which is usually, a, if it's a bad month, you usually follow through into October, it means that maybe this time October is not so bad. So I agree. We've got to be looking at what happens next. And I did have what I call the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge. It gave a very low reading uh, today. And that suggests immediately that the very following day, the Dow should have a slide to negative before it tries to rally. I personally would like that right because if you get that pullback and then it starts to rally, it says that for for today, and tomorrow, every pullback has been bought, and that's going to be very important. So the most important thing is by Friday, if we take out today's low on the Dow, which is 29,826, that's not going to be a good sign at all. But if, if we do get a pullback, and if the futures are very high, maybe we won't get it tomorrow. It's failed a couple of times this year, not many, but it's got a fabulous percentage uh, record, this uh, Chapman Wave trend gauge on the low, when it's very low. But if, if it doesn't fail, that's going to show that the, the buying pressure is so intense, especially if it gaps up tomorrow. That would give you the potential for a V-shaped pattern. And then I've drawn in right here. This is the next level where the Chapman Wave, I'll draw it and show you what I, I normally do. I, I double it up and I make it very tiny. This becomes red and it just gives you a very good sense of where the next um, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone is. And it's right in here. And if we're going into the next few days, it's in the 30,700s. That's another 500 points from here. That's, 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 you know, that, that would be really impressive if we can even get there. But that's the level we're looking at. But most importantly, on the short term, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence is still negative, even with this nice two day bounce. So I want to see the MACD cross nicely positive. That's this histogram it's called the 0% line going to positive, and that little green line will cross over the red. And the stochastic is still down at 15%. That is not very good. On balance volume, it's got the V-shaped recovery. The relative strength is actually quite nice. So not everything is in sync. So it was a very emotional buying pressure with shorts trying to cover, maybe new buys coming in, same thing today, but it's really important. So the levels to watch, if the Dow can close in the next two days or three days above, I call it 32,270, that would be really important. And if it starts to slide, you've got to hold the 30,000 support on the short term. 2,000 points in two days, man. That's pretty good, Dazzle. Amazing, <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Not complaining. Listen, you have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow, man. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.